Objective three now. So objective three has to do with some conjugate theorems. So conjugates, we're talking about irrational conjugates or imaginary conjugates. So um, a plus bi, a minus bi, that that kind of thing. So in the in the picture here, if you have either read or seen the movie based on the comics, um, Scott Pilgrim versus the World, here is Scott Pilgrim and Nega Scott. And uh, so this is a good instance of an, um, kind of a visualization of conjugates. Conjugates are the same thing, but in some kind of way, they're opposites from each other. And this is when he is about to fight himself. Well, his negative self. Anyway, so uh, <clears throat> let's take a look at some exercises again leading into this. So the first one, find all of the zeros of this function. Is there any relationship between the zeros? So if I, if I take a look at this, I, I know that I got directly off of the graph, I've got negative 5. Now, it seems very common. I keep picking negative 5. Don't know what's going on. So negative 5, let's divide that thing out. I know since this is the third degree, there should be three of them. So there's two more, and they touch the x-axis. Each multiplicity is 1. So cross the top 1, 3, negative 14, and negative 20. 1, negative 5. 2, positive 10, negative 4, positive 20, yes, it worked. All right, so what do we have left over? We <coughs> <coughs> That's right, we have the quadratic x squared minus 2x minus 4 equals 0. So at this point, you try to factor it. If it doesn't factor, use quadratic formula to complete the square. Complete the square? All right, let's do that. So x squared minus 2x plus something equals, go ahead and add the 4 over, plus something, the same something. Take half of the negative 2, 1, square it, 1, so add 1 to both sides. x minus 1, quantity squared, equals 5. Take the square root, x minus 1 equals plus or minus square root of 5, and then x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. What kind of numbers are those? Those things are irrational, first of all, because there's a square root of 5 in it, but they're conjugates, 1 plus the square root of 5 and 1 minus the square root of 5. Conjugate. Con Did I forget how to spell conjugates? One of these is a J. I think that's the one that's a J. I don't know. We'll see it typed out here in a minute. Anyway, take a look at the next one. Part B, same kind of thing. It's cubic, but look, it only touches the x-axis once, and apparently at negative 5, all these touch at negative 5. So if it doesn't touch at negative 5, you probably did it wrong. Right? Sarcasm. I wasn't being serious. Anyway, uh, so let's divide that out and see what's going on. So negative 5, 1. That's a 1, not a negative 1. Don't let me confuse you. A 3, a 16, 130. All right. So 1, negative 5, negative 2, 10, 26, and uh, let's see, that's 100 plus 30 is a negative 130. Of course, that worked. Shoulda, because I could see it right from the graph. So what I have left over here, x squared minus 2x plus 26. Let's, you want to complete the square again? Okay, let's do it. So uh, subtract the 26 over x squared minus 2x plus something equals negative 26 plus something. Divide by 2, square it's 1. Add 1, x minus 1 squared is equal to negative 25. Maybe you see where this is going. When I take the square root, x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus. Since it's negative, take the square root, it's got to be imaginary, 5i. Add the 1 over, x is equal to 1 plus or minus 5i. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Those are imaginary, first of all, are complex, complex, and these things are also conjugates. I got 1 plus 5i and 1 minus 5i. Conjugates. I think I spelled it right this time. All right, so uh, putting these two, two together, and you know, we, we've kind of seen this stuff before, but now we're formalizing it with some theorems. First conjugate theorem is polynomial 
function that has real coefficients this is an important part. If it has imaginary coefficients, this thing does not apply. But if it has real coefficients, then if one of your solutions is a plus bi, then another one has to be a minus bi. This means that imaginary solutions always come in pairs. They come two at a time, have to. Every single time, that's what the theorem is saying. Okay. So in order to get those things, I have to, as you saw from the last one, I did complete in the square. You could also use um, the quadratic formula. You cannot get those by factoring alone. Factoring is only going to give us rational ones. So to get these two, the pair of complex conjugates, I have to complete the square or use the, the quadratic formula. Okay. So the next one is the irrational theorem, the irrational conjugates theorem. Same setup, polynomial function with real coefficients, only works with real coefficients, then um, if you have a plus the square to b as one solution, you must also have a minus the square to b. Those things also come in conjugate pairs. So irrational solutions always come in conjugate pairs, always come in twos. And just like before, the only way for us to get them is by using the quadratic formula or by completing the square. So knowing that, put this stuff together, we're going to work backwards and we're going to come up with the function rather than um, just say graphing it or figuring out what the solutions are. So working backwards here. So you use the complex conjugate theorem to explain why a polynomial is a real coefficients of odd degrees, so it's third degree, it's a f uh, fifth degree, whatever, has to have at least one real root. So someone I remember has already commented in the comments like she made this conclusion. She asked this question. is very, very smart before we even got here. Odd degrees always, always have to cross the x-axis. And if it crosses the x-axis, it must have one real solution. And the reason why is because it's odd. Odd numbers, well, complex ones, they only come in pairs, right? So complex solutions or zeros come in pairs. That's an even number. And an odd number is always one more than that. So there's always one more solution and that one more solution has to be a real one because it's a single solution and it can't be complex because those come in pairs. So one more must be real. And that's pretty interesting. That's an interesting thing to know. Okay. So on exercise eight, here's where we're working backwards. So write a polynomial function of least degree. So I want the smallest degree possible. I want rational coefficients, so I don't want any square roots in there. Um, and I want uh, a leading coefficient of one. So this is as simple as possible, okay? And here are my zeros. Two as the first one and negative two minus five i. What degree should we have? I want the least degree possible. So you might think I'm just going to have second degree because there's only two here. But that would be wrong. You're not paying attention to the theorems. Respect the theorems. So the minus 2 minus 5i should come as a pair. Minus 2 plus 5i must be another one of the solutions. So there should be a total of 3. So this is the easiest way to work backwards. This is not in the book. This is not the way they show how to do it. This is way easier. So take the first one, the x equals 2, and actually write it like that, x equals 2. Now let's work this thing backwards. Work this thing backwards by taking that 2 and subtracting it over to the other side. There we go. So I have x minus 2 is equal to 0. There's the first factor, right? So remember, this is, this is an instance where it's showing you that x is lying to you. Whenever it's in the factor, x minus 2 is lying to you. The actual factor is x equals 2, or the actual 0 is. So now let's take the second one, which is actually a pair. x minus 5i is actually x, or, or negative 2 plus or minus 5i. So again, working this thing backwards. What's the next thing that I would do? Working backwards is I'd take that negative 2, and I would add it to the other side. Okay, then working backwards, the next step is to square both sides. So on the left-hand side, I have that binomial that I have to square, and on the right-hand side, plus or minus 5i, and I'd square that. So on the left side, when I square that binomial, x squared 
plus 4x plus 4. And on the right hand side, 25i squared, what's i squared? It's negative 1, so that means it's negative 25. And then the last thing is take that negative 25, add it to the other side, so your final other um, the other factor is x squared plus 4x plus 29. Put those two things together and then just expand it out, foil the whole thing out, multiply it out. So here's your final answer. Your final function is f of x equals x cubed plus 2x squared plus 21x minus 58. If you were to solve this, you would get three answers. One of them would be the real number 2, and that would be the only place where it crosses the x-axis. The other two are imaginary, negative 2 plus 5i and negative 2 minus 5i. All right, so this is where I'm going to stop here. There's a couple of more examples for you to try in the next, um, the next video. There you go.